Welcome to Heavenly Nosh. We are going through the Bible still, and this is a really cool part of the story, and it's the story of the Exodus. Now, it starts with Joseph, and Joseph and his brothers and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, uh, they are kind of, it's a story that unfolds as a famine in the land, and Joseph eventually works for the Pharaoh in Egypt. And he, it's a kind of a cool story, you need to read it. So Joseph saves all of the, of Egypt and all the surrounding nations because he's stored up all this grain because God gave a dream to Pharaoh and Joseph was able to interpret the dream. And they lived together in harmony for a while. And, but after a while, a new Pharaoh came along and they forgot some of their own history and the Jews kept growing numerically and really the Egyptians didn't like that and eventually the Jews became slaves. They were there for 400 years, and uh, it's, it became a really difficult story, and, and the Jews are trapped there, and they're helping to build the pyramids and in slavery. And in, into this scene, a guy called Moses is born, and he's born to a Jewish family, um, but they're killing a lot of the, the, the firstborn babies of the Jews at that time. And Moses' mother hides Moses in a basket right by a river and the river and the basket floats off down the river and it ends up right by the pyramids where the palace is and cut a long story short Moses is found and and looked after uh, by by the Pharaoh's wife and he grows up in the palace as one of the, the sons of the kind of um, yeah royalty if you like but he's really a Jew but he doesn't know he's a Jew and he becomes he becomes an adult and he begins to kind of realize his his story one day he sees uh, Jews being whipped really badly and he and he gets angry and he and he tries to stop it but he ends up killing the Egyptian task task kind of guy that was whipping and then he runs off into the desert and he hides and he's and he lives in the desert for quite a few years and eventually comes back and, and in that time he meets God in a burning bush and you need to read the story because it's a it's quite a long story and I can't do it justice right now read the story it's Exodus it's amazing he meets God in a burning bush and God reveals his character to Moses and says I want you to set my people free I want you to save my people and lead them out of Egypt into the promised land to a, a, a new land that I'm going to give to you it will be your inheritance it will be your home forever and so Moses eventually goes back to the Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. You might have heard the song or seen the cartoon, let my people go. And the Pharaoh's, no, I'm not gonna let the people go. And, and, and Moses says, if you don't, then there's gonna be plagues that will come. God, God is in control, he's in charge and you need to let, let the Jews go. Pharaoh says, no. And then these plagues start coming. And Moses keeps warning the Pharaoh and his heart's pretty hard. And you, there's locusts and blood and, and terror boils and all kinds of plagues that there's 10 of them come. Eventually, uh, the last one is a terrible one. Um, the firstborn children are gonna die. And God says, if you, to the Jews, I'm gonna save the Jews in this whole process. If you paint the blood of a lamb over your door, your, your children will be protected. So the Jews put blood over the over the door lintel. And that night, the angel of death comes. It's a terrible, terrible part of the story. And all the firstborn sons in Egypt die, but the Jews don't. And after that, the Pharaoh loses his own son. He's so devastated that he says, go, be gone, get out of, get out of, of Egypt. And so the Jews leave and they go on this exodus into the desert. And then they kind of go and, and the, the story keeps unfolding and, and you, the water parts and Pharaoh chases them and God's with them all the way. It leads to the next chapter where we're gonna look at the law and the 10 commandments. But I'm gonna backtrack because that bit where the Jews are set free and, and, and escape Egypt uh, is called the Passover feast. And eventually God speaks to them about this Passover feast where they eat a special meal to remember God setting them free. And God was always doing that, kind of remember what's happened, remember how I led you, remember what, what I did, how I provided my goodness, and pass it on to the next generation. And, and the Israelites have done that uh, for thousands of years, actually. So we're gonna do a Passover meal. 
and the instructions were that it had to be unleavened bread and that reminded them that they had to leave quickly in the middle of the night they didn't have time to 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 prove their bread it was just quick so we've got unleavened bread I'm gonna cook it on the on the barbecue you can do this on a gas barbecue always cook your bread on a barbecue it's really it comes out really well and then it was lamb and it had to be roasted lamb uh, it couldn't be boiled uh, and or roasted whole and so I've got this this lamb here and I've marinated it in a Lebanese spice and I mixed it myself so it's it's garlic and it's ground coriander seed and ground cumin and mixed spice I'll put the ingredients or the recipe for that into the description below I've marinated it overnight with virgin olive oil salt and pepper and I've actually cut a few of the bits of fat off as well um, because they're quite good on kebabs it kind of helps helps it melt uh, so I'm gonna just put it together I've got a proper a proper kind of kebab skewer and a few onions So we're just going to basically just skewer it up um, and you can mix it up another bit of fat the Turks do this as well you'll you'll find this um, as a kind of something called a shish kebab all over the Middle East it's favored uh, a really really enjoyable meal and you eat it with flatbread and you can kind of in many ways you can you can make any mixes you want but I quite like you could put peppers on Let's have another bit of meat this is a leg of lamb Quite therapeutic again, threading kebab meat, and particularly when you know you're about to eat it. And there's a the last bit of fat. It's a good sound. So it just goes onto the onto the charcoal alongside the bread, and it's a slow process. Um, but we're not trying to cook it till it's an old boot. So we want it to be kind of tender inside. But the lamb represents the blood that they put upon uh, the lintel of the doors that saved them. And it represents God's salvation, if you like, that God saves, that he, that he protects uh, in the midst of, of terrible hardship that they were facing. And later on, when Jesus comes into the story, he too was called the lamb of God. And he was, you know, the same kind of imagery about God's ultimate salvation for mankind but we'll come back to that uh, in the future oh it smells so good so we'll let that cook for a bit and um, we'll have a look and see in, in a few minutes oh that's looking good man is there, is there anything better than cooking kebab by a river in the sun um, it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful moment so my kebab um, is finished so remember it was marinated lamb with fat and, and onion interspersed that's been slowly barbecued. Um, shish kebab, sometimes called shashlik. Uh, but anyway, oh, that's so good. So we'll, uh, we'll put that there. And also the bread's looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. So I'll maybe fold that. So here we are. And uh, this is the Passover meal. And so I've got some baby rocket here and um, this is bitter herbs and I think the bitter herbs represent the, the sadness and the bitterness of, of, the, of the enslavement. Um, so that's why that, that kind of happens and works like that. We've got the lamb for the salvation, we've got the, the unleavened bread about the rushing, how quickly they had to leave and the bitter herbs representing the slavery and, and the sadness of the people. So we're gonna just carve it up and see what it looks like. Oh, that's, 
so good. Always wanted to do that. Man, the kebab shops I've been to. So, here we have it. I've got some chili sauce, because actually, chili sauce is very important. This is actually Indonesian chili sauce. It's called sambal alek. It's really nice. So there we go. This is the remembrance meal of God saving the people in the Exodus story. Again, read it. It's such a great story. And Christians and Muslims and Judaic uh, Jews, they all really, this, the Exodus story is really central. And so it's a, it's a story that unites us in many ways across religions um, with one God um, in his faithfulness leading the people to the promised land. So here we go. I bet you're jealous now, aren't you? Because uh, you were looking at that meat thinking, I really want to eat that meat. Because I feel that way. Uh, a bit of a bitter herbs, baby rocket. I'll dip it in there. So thanks for coming. Um, if you have liked this, subscribe, share it with your friends, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs>